This broadcast is brought to you by Colby Brooks with Century 21 Right Pace Real Estate and buyfrombrooks.com. Three major local stories tonight that we want to cover on NEA Report. First, a new prosecutor will be in the Linda Collins Smith murder case. Breaking tonight, Henry Boyce is leaving the case. He's done. But who's coming in? We don't know exactly yet, and we'll talk about that all coming up in just a moment. Another case we're following in Greene County where the records that weren't released yesterday have been released to us today. Just as we said, they should have been done already. And Ollie the dog. Yeah, remember that case? Well, Hunter Nelson was in court today and we'll tell you how that went next on the NEA Report. Breaking news tonight on NEA Report, a big story that has been developing for the past few days. A new prosecutor is going to be named in the Linda Collins case in Northeast Arkansas and Randolph County. And the prosecution of Rebecca Lynn O'Donnell for capital murder will not be happening under the judge candidate and prosecutor, Henry Boyce, who is requested to be taken off of his duty of the case. Now, we don't know why. Yeah, there's a lot of questions surrounding this. There's some speculation, too, but we don't have the actual answers to this. Now, here's what Max Brantley published this afternoon. He said Circuit Judge John Fogelman signed the order relieving Boyce of his duty at his own request. That was on Wednesday. That's yesterday. Uh, the order not giving a reason for him stepping down. And Boyce, of course, not returning calls about the matter to Brantley or really to anybody. He doesn't return press calls anymore. I guess unless he needs our help for something. Uh, the brief simply stated that Boyce had moved to be relieved and that the judge had reviewed the request and granted the motion. Boyce is running for district judge. And of course, that's something that's going to be coming up in March. That's taking a lot of time, especially when you consider the trial of your lifetime, a capital murder case involving a politician in Randolph County probably would require a lot of time as well. So could that possibly be a reason why that he was was asking to be taken off the case? Maybe. We don't know. But that's that's probably one of the more harmless reasons that we could speculate on. And so it, it seems a little bit less risky to at least go there for now. Um, we do also want to mention, this has been a case where four district judges have gone through it now, right? Uh, last week, John Fogelman was assigned to it. This happened after retired Judge David Goodson stepped down. We didn't have a reason why. It was undisclosed reasons that he stepped down, but I did get a little bit of a tip, and I thought I might share it. I was told that there may have been some type of concern about his beliefs conflicting with the capital murder punishment of, potentially, the death penalty. That's a rumor, and I have no confirmation on that. Uh, it did come from some law enforcement sources, but the issue is this case has a gag order on it. And frankly, that gag order was issued because of NEA Report's work. We were exposing details about this, and the prosecutor, Henry Boyce, who wanted to control the flow of information, possibly because he's running for office, he decided that he did not want information getting out that he had not put his stamp of approval on. Boyce even went on to say that it jeopardized the case for information to be released. However, the defense has stated in interviews with the family of the accused, Rebecca O'Donnell's fiancé, Tim Loggins, they have discussed in interviews not being able to find any evidence or being given access to any of the information the prosecutors should be sharing. In other words, Henry Boyce is playing it close to the chest, or he was until yesterday. Now he's not going to anymore. But who will? We don't have that answer yet. We don't know. According to this article, Bob McMahon, hopefully no relation events, so the state prosecuting coordinator who arranged prosecutors on the request had confirmed, maybe that's where he got the story, he had been asked to find a special prosecutor, but he said no information on what led to Boyce's request. And of course, if you're wondering why, well, why are all these people getting off of this case? Well, in addition to it being a, a Republican state senator up there, who obviously knew quite a few people, her husband, her ex-husband, was a judge in the same circuit as Harold Irwin and then uh, Judge Tom Garner, right? So Phil Smith was a judge also 
who heard cases by Henry Boyce. And for some reason, it took until this moment for Henry Boyce to take himself off of the case. Mm. We don't know the exact reason yet, but we're going to be looking for it, and we'll let you know when we find it on NEA Report. An update tonight in the Greene County Sheriff's Deputy case of the Deputy Rocky Weber, who's a suspect in an investigation uh, into an alleged domestic violence incident. Now we have the record, which was refused to be released to us yesterday under an exemption that did not apply to the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act. Well, we helped educate County Attorney Kimberly Dale and the Sheriff Steve Franks over the past few hours, and they released the incident report just as we reported that they were required to by the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act. Now, it's still going to have most of the stuff redacted in it, the investigative nature of it. But we have access to the fact that there is an investigative file. There is a ton of evidence attached to this, multiple witness statements. What's the problem, Sheriff Franks? I mean, are you, are you looking for the smoking gun on this? Because no other domestic battery case that I've ever seen would need to have such a preponderance of ridiculously, unmeasurably, unmeetable evidence. But this case is different because they're investigating one of their own. Rocky Weber, mutual friends on Facebook with Sheriff Steve Franks. Sheriff Franks is now looking at the third, at least, of his deputies that's under investigation in just a few short months. And unfortunately, Sheriff Franks has been very much less than forthcoming about these, including with the Cody Use situation. With Scott Pillow's situation, he did tell us what happened after we asked. And in this situation, well, we almost had to fight him to get something. And we would have if we needed to, because this is a case that was just won in court by the Jonesboro Sun. It's almost inexcusable for a county attorney 30 minutes away from a city that hosted training at First National Bank Arena to not understand the principles of Arkansas Freedom of Information Act law. But that's where we were at today. Thankfully, at about, oh, 4.51 p.m., nine minutes before the close of business, well, we received our records request back, and we appreciate that. We're going to keep following the story that's now apparently in the hands of Paragool Police Department to be investigated. How long this investigation into a misdemeanor is going to continue, we don't know. Uh, but there is also legal precedent uh, for them to release the remaining portion of the investigative file, including the portion that is masked right now. The reason is because... There logically can only be so many investigative steps taken before this is finished. And those were already all taken at the beginning. This isn't something you bring everybody in for a polygraph test on. It's quick. It's You submit it to the prosecutor and you're gone. But maybe it's not so quick when you're trying to protect one of your own. And that's what we're trying to make sure is not happening here in Greene County, where we'll keep following this case on NEA Report. Let's bring you an update now on Ollie the dog, the missing dog that went missing in the care of Hunter Nelson, the supposed dog trainer, who for some reason kept losing dogs, not just Ollie. But after we reported this case, countless other dogs just like Ollie the dog had been put in Hunter Nelson's care for dog training, supposed to be gone for a few weeks, and they never returned home. He kept giving the same story about the dogs getting bit by a snake and dying, but that story doesn't make sense when three or four or more people have heard it verbatim. Then dogs were found dead on his property that he had trained these dogs on, where the kennels were seen, countless ones lined up. And the case has just been a mystery since. Rachel Tyra was Ollie's owner, and she has decided to fight this, and good for her. You have to decide to fight back sometimes when you've been wronged in life, and she did. She got a great local attorney, Jared Woodard, with uh, Stanley Woodard Law Firm. And the case was in court today as Woodard was filing a motion to compel because according to the court filings, the plaintiff was saying the defense was not complying. The defense was not providing documents that they had requested. They have to go through in a civil case, the discovery phase, where one side says, we want you to tell us this. We want you to answer this question. 
And the other side either says, here's the answer, or I don't have to answer that for X, Y, Z reasons, perhaps not relevant, which was in some cases the exact reason that was given, right? So that was what was coming from the plaintiffs today, but the defense had something too. They sought a protective order because of the attorney for Tyra Woodard uh, having given me several comments on the, on the record on this case. Simply put, he didn't reach out to me to give them. I contacted him uh, to get the information from him because, you know, that's, that's what a reporter does. And, of course, we're the reason that this story has been covered to begin with. So, apparently that miffed the attorney for Hunter Nelson and perhaps Nelson himself. And so he sought a protective order to prevent the plaintiff's lawyer from sharing details with the press, at least that weren't in public court records, right? Or perhaps even that were, just go there and get them. Anyway, let's tell you what happened. So the motion to compel was granted. The deadline for that is January 5th. That's our next red letter date on this. Yes, that's one month away from today. And that means that January 5th, the defense better have some answers after all of these months of waffling and delaying. We'll see if that happens or if there are more delays. But Hunter Nelson was in court today, quiet, reserved, obviously, because what would he say? There was no reason for him to even speak today in court. However, it surprised a few people that he did show up over in Jonesboro, considering he's been rumored to have moved over out of state, at least perhaps next door to Tennessee, but we don't know that for sure. We also don't know that he's still training dogs, but that's a rumor that we've heard as well that's been more concerning perhaps than anything. Folks, this guy does not need to be training your dog. There's breaking news on any April court, and we just got word from the Jonesboro Police Department right now, and we're coming at you at uh, 9.20 p.m. here in, uh, on NEA report, that there's been gunshots reported in Jonesboro. Actually, the full screen incorrectly says it was reported downtown. It was near the downtown area uh, that the, the gunshots actually popped up on the Ring Neighbors app while we were here live with you, and so I called Jonesboro Police just uh, uh, real quickly uh, while we were actually doing our broadcast with one of our assistants did, and we've got this in. So apparently there have been six gunshots, or at least uh, that many, reported by one person. JPD's dispatcher, uh, rather desk sergeant, told me that the uh, area of this was Haltom and Richmond, uh, that the gunshots were uh, just reported in. And so I don't have any, any more information. This just happened. Uh, but people were reporting as many as six gunshots that, uh, according to this map area, it looks like they lived east of downtown is a little bit southwest of Arkansas State University. It's going to be south of Johnson Avenue, north of Highland, north of Nettleton, perhaps, was the area where this was reported. Uh, late breaking news that just came in here on NEA Report, so we'll be following that. Um, I'll check in as well with Sally Smith once we're done with our broadcast to see if there's, uh, hopefully, it's just a... Uh, well, hopefully there's no injuries in this. That's all we can say because apparently there's been another shooting in Jonesboro. Let's see if we can help Jonesboro Police Department solve a crime. If you know who might own that black pickup truck that is pulling there into the mini storage, it's going to be pulling out again in just a second, then that person, police need their identity. Because on Monday, November 25th, it was about 7.30 p.m. that this whole thing happened. And what this whole thing was, was an alleged theft of $1,000 or less in breaking or entering. It's a crime that this person is going to be charged with after the incident took place. According to a release posted by JPD on their social media page, the owner of that vehicle uh, was seen breaking into a storage unit that evening. So if you know who that is, call Crime Stoppers at 870-935-STOP or call the desk sergeant, 935-5657. Your tip could lead to cash. While we're on the Jonesboro Police Department Facebook page, let's let you know about an arrest, a second one, that was made in the weekend murder of Andrew Powell in Jonesboro. The police said in this release on their social media page through extensive investigation that detectives developed leads that connected 22-year-old Chiron Stiegel of Jonesboro to the incident. It says that Stiegel was apprehended and brought in for questioning, and it says he was later arrested and placed in custody of the Craighead County Detention Center awaiting his PC hearing. That was posted before noon on Thursday. 
So just to give you an update, uh, six gunshots reported on the Ring Neighbors app just a moment ago. It's 923 here Thursday night in Jonesboro, December the 5th, 2019. I do know the year. And apparently it was in the area of Halton and Rich Haltom and Richmond. I think I'm getting the spelling right on the first road, but I did not have time uh, to check that because we're obviously live broadcasting here and we're trying to get you the information as quickly as we can. Um, gunshots heard as many as six reported on the Ring Neighbors app. Jonesboro Desk Sergeant saying Halton, Haltom and and Richmond, the area that they're responding to. I have very little information about this, but as soon as we're done with our uh, broadcast here of the show, we're going to be checking in with JPD. Hopefully this is not a shooting with injuries. Hopefully it wasn't even a shooting, right? But it seems like six is a little more than a car backfiring. I don't know. So we'll keep our, keep our eyes on this story. We'll let you know on NEA Report. Follow, like, and subscribe. We may end up having to do another breaking news video tonight after this one. So we'll see. Stay with us. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes to join us tonight on NEA Report. We hope we're worth your time and we appreciate you for sharing it with us. Please like, share, and subscribe if you think we've earned it and support local news if you don't mind. Become a supporter, 99 cents a month, and you get access to a lot of exclusive stuff, including the great feeling knowing that you're helping make all this happen. That's the best of all. I'm Stan Morris, reporting live from Jonesboro, and you're up to date on NEA Report. Have a good one.